line of flight. Women on the riverbank, feet wet, voices sunward lifted, sing songs known by heart. Some spread wings, move in time, others stay folded, toes rooted amongst cold stones. Each voice illuminates a particular radiance, our bodies singular yet of one kind, variations on a theme like the folk songs we sing. Here on this very river, my ancestors founded a town. They crossed distances unimaginable without wings. She did it, the woman from whom I'm descended. First, the Atlantic from Ireland as a girl of 17, sent by parents who feared the dark flower of her undowried blossoming, their scant food thrown into the dark hole of her hunger. She made the ocean voyage alone with an aunt about whom little is known, two women alone. Landed in New Orleans, made their way to St. Louis. There the girl married an Irishman, and together they heard the long golden call of California. With 12 children, they set out over land, and a 13th was born on the way. The physical hardships she faced, a pregnant woman crossing a rugged country without wings, the lack of comfort, or maybe there was a sort of comfort I've rarely known, close stars accompanying her across changing landscapes, closeness of shared peril, solidarity of a family, a community, bound together in isolation on a barely discernible strand of trail. They went looking for gold, but instead they found life, opening a grocery store to provision the budding town near which I find myself on a pilgrimage of sorts, generations later. All thir 13 children lived to adulthood. <clears throat> Priests said her body was a sight and a source of sin. Did the frontier unravel those bindings? Did she intuit, using the sense our science still discredits, the changes that would come for us? Her descendants standing in a group of women who summon, in four-part harmony, a strength to match the rapids. My strength come down from her mountains, like this river in which I anchor myself, despite the chill and the uneven stones. I spread my wings. Heat has baked the ache out of the rotator blades, and the latest treatment has been working pretty well on the stiff hingetoids. I repeat to myself that my body is not a site and a source of sin and disorder, that the doctors are not poisoning me, that I am living as best I can in the body I have. Strong enough today to release myself from the exigencies of worry, safe in the flock with my sisters, rising up from one bank, catching the air and coasting to the opposite side. Joyce is a lifeguard and will swoop down to pluck me from the water if something happens. But it won't, not today. The music is too buoyant, too joyous to allow for a fall. The deep cornerstone of the chords I sing with the other altos, over which the sopranos dart sparkling cascades, is so round and resonant in my abdomen that I can't drop. The other women so powerful, their voices alone keep me aloft. Back in the city, we return to our singular lives, our great magic dispersed into everything we do, touching all we touch, work, partners, children, friends. Back in the city, my lover puts his hand over the valley between my breasts, feels the expansion and contraction of my singing muscles as I breathe. You, he says reverently, are so powerful. I start smiling because I never would have thought, I mean never, when I was younger and my body was simply a sight of pain, that one day I would be this whole, this healed. Bright ribbons of river rise up through me, into him, coming down from snowy mountain heights inside me, enough to share. Then I open my mouth and it is full of music.
There I rest. My invitation floated between crests and troughs, washing ashore in the arc of an encrusted carapace. Its message burned my brain like ten commandments into Sinai stone. There was no disputing its urgency, authority, finality. The sound of the sea drew me to a rocky promontory, spit slick from spray, coughed up from a throaty canyon. I welcomed an unexpected calm to continuously enter, leave, enter my physical being to mollify the molecular turbulence which had so recently taken its toll. I had been, after all, a restless guest soothed here and was ready for permanent quarters. Thin clouds enfolded me with sticky embrace, smelling faintly of flowers of familiar fragrance as the sea welcomed me for the final time.